Hey there, everyone. I figured I might as well stream today. Oh, well, not stream, but record a video. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make some assertions for the uh, Markdown Highlighter component. I'm bringing this under test. Test took me some time. I'm just going to show you um, what's happening there in a second. So. Let me start again. Um, what I'm testing here is the um, the token output of the highlighter after it run over the strings that I'm passing in. Um, I started with different helper functions and then expanded them to make the tests as short as possible. Um, not quite, not quite happy with these kinds of uh, statements, but I'm going to explain them as we go. Um, and they're the best that I have at the moment. So what's happening here is um, that I'm adding hashtags on top of uh, general purpose multi-markdown highlighter. And multi-markdown, the syntax itself, on its own doesn't have any notion of um, hashtags, wiki links, or stuff like that. So adding this in um, requires some post-processing. So we get the you get um, stuff like headings and bold text and emphasis. Um, and the other regular um, syntax elements, just like that. But these things have to be, let's say, hacked in uh, after the highlighting is done. So what I'm testing here is that all the edge cases work. Doing this manually is very tedious. And automating tests, as always, um, is very nice. So what I'm wanting to do here is uh, I want to, to write a test to show that um, hashtags and headings work well together. So let's do that. This heading this is a hashtag. Oh, well, might as well write in full. So the trade enclosure syntax doesn't work here. At least not as far as Xcode's autocompletion is concerned. But what I've got here now is, uh, well, that's the input string. And uh, markdown headings usually require a space here. Some editors don't respect this requirement, but well, we're pretty strict. So this this should be a heading. And the whole line should be a heading, um, but a hashtag inside a heading should work. Mm. You know what? This brings to my attention that here is like that I'm lucky, lacking tests for um, unhappy paths, so to speak. So even if that hashtag here is, fo is found, I want to assert that. Um, Leaving a space between the hash and the word um, will not produce a match. So how do I assert this? This is this is a bit simpler, and we'll start there. Um, the storage is um, basically NS. Uh, what's it called? NS text storage. Um, I think talking about this makes me realize that I'm, I'm not thinking about the pieces. And the names very often I'm talking. Um, well, anyway, this is this is you know this is uh, the storage. There's all the attributed strings inside wrapped in um, some Markdown aware stuff. And this here returns uh, all the token paths. It's basically attribute at. Well, let's let's have a look. It's basically like here. Where is it? Uh, calling this range token path and this range token path returns a path and the range the effectively the, the effective range um, and you see here it's a text storage um, category or extension and range token path gets the attribute and this uh, attribute key that I added myself at the character index and it stores the effective range and in the end you get the effective range so uh, 
that's it. And this makes me realize that I'm not checking for um, and is not found here. Might as well leave it to do now. Oh, I can type blind. Check for n is not. I think this should not happen that this is non nil, but then the location is uh, not found because if there's a positive match, then it should also. If there's a positive match, then if both effective range and the return value of attribute at character index should return something useful. Mm. If you need the maximum range, go in by attribute name. Mm. Maybe we should use that instead. Going to revisit that later, which is in a minute or two. So this gives me just a list of uh, token ranges, and this is an assertion helper that um, takes these dictionaries on both sides, and then sorts the them by by range, and then also uh, compares them. So this the the um, dictionary style uh, is not useful anymore, but it was a stepping stone to get to this point. I'm now passing in tuples. Um, for the uh, comparison part. So, what do we have here? We have the flattened token path, and this is covering the whole string. And the first eight characters, which is the hash, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that was the old string. This is the whole um, hashtag that should be found. What we have here is we want the text plain. And then there should be one character which is uh, also text plane. That's the uh, space itself. And then there's, oh damn it, I'm not typing on my regular keyboard today. And there's one character of type, it's a paragraph block, and this is a hash one token. Then we have this again, another space. But the space is not a token on its own, so we have a space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again, eight uh, characters worth of regular text. Um, writing uh, link, link matching assertions is a bit weird still. Uh, I don't like this. but. What I, what I really want is I want to, to have the link at this position and also the, um, not just the URL, but also the effective range. So I can compare that. I need to add that in in a second. Um, but for now, I'm just aiming roughly with the location specifier roughly inside this word. And then I'm checking, okay, this is, this, there's a link attribute in there. I'm not asserting if it goes from here to here, it might just be this character. Um, the assertions don't cover that. I want to cover that this, this, is, this was eight characters, so this is the uh, eighth location, nine, second, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this is the eighth, and the ninth is here. I want to assert that the ninth is empty. It should not be anything, because this is not a hashtag. And for good measure, I also want to make sure that somewhere here in between there is also not a link. Some annotations to help me remember what these character positions ought to be. I mean, if I change the string and these assertions don't change, but then the locations are off because, well, if I type this here, then it will also all 
these will also be true, but the ninth location um, will point to this and that doesn't make any sense. Um, so this is a backup. Uh, okay, let's let's run this and see if I've got anything wrong with the character offsets. Mm. Fingers crossed, no. Okay, and here's where I am um, having these helpers because the output, if you compare dictionaries, um, which are uh, key value based and, and, and hash based, um, the output isn't sorted by any means. So it wasn't very uh, useful. It wasn't very easy to compare um, where things didn't align. But here I have to look for the start of the left hand side and then to the start of the right hand side. And then I can compare 0 to 8, 0 to 8, text plane, text plane, 8 to 9, 8 to 9. Text plane, text plane, 9 to 10, 9 to 11. Mm. It's hash one. So it does eat. So this is effectively the ninth and the tenth character. So it's two characters wide, and uh, this is effectively eating the space. That's weird. Now that's what the highlighter is doing try it again weird thing is that here where there's no character following um where there's just a space and then end of string uh we don't get this See, I wonder if I add an A and then this. Should it be the other way around because this is going to be the hash? Is it coalescing all the spaces after hash? But why? Okay, this is unexpected. Hash is expected to be one character, but in reality it is two. Oh wait, here. In reality it's two. Hmm. Unexpected indeed, but I want to see, um, I want to assert that n nothing in the end uh, doesn't do anything. So this is another case. I don't want to add another character here um, by design. Okay, so make this test green again. All right, now that let's add assertions here. Storage, flattened path, and this is a well. What's take? Take is just the short verb I pick to make this helper function. Doesn't actually take anything. Um, okay, this this whole block is not a paragraph block. This, this is different, but the whole block is. Uh, we're basically flattening a tree structure where. A token covers this, this is a whole whole block, then a token covers um, this, and then a token covers this, and then a token covers this inside the plain text part of this. And so it's basically, it was nested, but after the processing and applying of attributes, we get a flattened version where um, you can, you can uh, see that uh, this is the parent or root element, and these are child elements inside. Um, and here you see there's uh, some more nesting. This is a paragraph block with, uh, let's see, a paragraph block, the whole thing, and the first part is a plain text, and then this this piece is, um, corresponds to this. It's a HTML comment pair, and this is a whole range, and inside there are multiple other tokens, and these are the flattened versions where you get, um, uh, where you, where you, uh, now, well, I think that's the verb where you flatten the tree uh, inside. So this is going to be the heading part, I think. I'm I'm not quite sure um, what it does out of the box. I would have to look this up. Um, but let's assume that we've got. Uh, I think we've got the hash one inside a special block first. Okay, let's let's start with that. I assume we have block h1 this is a first level heading and inside we have a 
marker H1, I think, which is um, some kind of alternative to uh, the, the hash one that is just appearing anywhere in text. This is a hash one that is uh, being a marker for a level one heading. That's my assumption at least. I'm, we're going to see if that's the token that we actually get. And this should be plain text. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine characters Y. Look, a H one text plain, maybe. But then we have a different block. I think this is eight because we had this before. And here I'm adding this, this, I wish there was a token like this, but it's, uh, but it isn't, um, but I'm wishfully commenting it inside for later. And I think what I'm going to have to do is to, ex to, to make another run after the built in C highlighter for multi markdown finishes its job and assembles the token tree. Um, I think all the post processing should, uh, convert this to um, actually meaningful tokens because I, I don't need this. I don't need to know where if there's a hash one inside. I'm not highlighting these things separately. I only need this as an input for um, as input for uh, well, a hashtag um, recognition. And when I know this is a hashtag, then I want to have a hashtag link token to um, easily see if my cursor is inside the insertion point here, it's blinking inside this, then I want to see, okay, at this location, we're in a link hashtag inside a plain text inside a heading. Um, and then have some some useful data. At the moment, um, all I can say that I'm in text inside of a heading, and I cannot say that I'm in a hashtag. This is I'm happening on another level, which works, but is uh, not unified. And I don't like that. Okay, after the hashtag, we have one, two, three, four, five, six six characters worth of plain text again. Mm. Block H1, ah, oh, dang it. Text plain without the wishful hashtag. Now for the link, there's only one and it is inside location 10. Now what's this doing? This is um, an, a URL string assembly helper. It's making, oh, let's have a look, making a file URL because these are more forgiving um, when it comes to uh, um, passing in weird strings. Um, uh, Web-based, HTTP-based um, web URL doesn't accept um, two hashes, for example. It just returns nil. Um, that's not useful. So we're using file URLs and then um, have some more leeway. And this is also used um, in the storage configuration where the lookup or where the transformation of, well, here's a wiki link, well, here's a hashtag link, well, here's an image link. When a hashtag is found by the um, highlighter, it's cause calling this closure and this closure is using this helper function. So the highlighter is inserting a link of the form like so, just what we saw just a second ago. Um, it's inserting a link of the form as defined by this function. And this function is also used by my test assertions. So they, I don't have to write out the whole URL and I can focus on, well, I expect to the, 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 the general purpose hashtag function to be used effectively, or at least a compatible output. And I want the um, interesting part to be this. So this hashtag thing should be embedded in the URL. That's how it works. Mm, let's have a look if this did its thing. It's always negative. I'm just testing the positive um, link here, not all the cases where, oh yeah, yeah that didn't work. Uh, marker H1, this is, this this kind of makes sense that the H1 marker um, consumes the space afterwards because this is not an H1 marker, but the combination of the hash and the space, that's an H1 marker. So I'm fine with that. 
that makes sense. This this doesn't because uh, the space is not part of the hash. Okay, so now these expectations did work. Um, that's nice. So I know that headings, hashtags inside headings work. Uh, yeah, that's good. That is in good indeed. And here you see the hashtag code. It's um, acting in when when the tokens are processed. It's acting on a text hash. Um, only if it's not inside a pair of backticks. So only if we're not inside a, a inline comment. I need to test that too, I just realized. These are just the hash pieces. Well, I'm, I'm usually, usually in my tests, yeah, sorry, sorry. Usually in my tests, I'm, um, I would be writing um, test cases for maybe each of these or maybe at least each of these blocks but here I realized that um, this is so related and also the blocks make it easy to to see what is one um, case. I'm currently leaning towards making a test hashtag which is very broad and very non-test driven development conventionally unconventional but still. Uh, fine with that. Okay, yes. Text. This is supposed to be code. And also this is supposed to be code. Okay, let's conjure the old friends foo bar and buzz. Nice. Um, why am I doing this? Because um, naive implementations of escaping of hashtags or stuff like that uh, could be looking for uh, just a backtick in front of a hash and then um, escape. You could do this with regular expressions quite easily, but this is getting a bit um, harder because you need to look for pairs and it's harder to see that this is not a pair and this the parser does a good job at this, but a regular expression on the if implementation of a parser, well, they often suck when it comes to cases like this. But thanks to the token tree, we know that this is um, an inline code block piece, and inside there may be other tokens like you know, this. But even if um, even if that's there, they are not interested. Mm. But it makes me think why why am I how can I be working on a text hash token? Well there's the hash one token. I didn't even notice this. Um that this is uh not what I expected to happen. I mean there's let's have a look at the tokens, shall we? There's the text hash token and then somewhere here is the hash one token. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Back to this case and we'll inspect this later. Assert that the flattened path is. Yeah, I'm, I'm not hitting all the keys because I'm not using the keyboard I'm usually using, and there the keys are apparently ordered differently. We've got four characters of block power text plane then we've got one two three four chance of block power code in inline yeah, what's it called ah it's just called pair backticks. And this is again uh, multi-markdown peculiarity. Um, the tokenizer is looking for these uh, syntactic units, but it's not a semantic unit. So you, you don't even get um, links, you just get pairs of braces. And then you have to figure out which is a, what, what's a link, what's an, um, like an ellipsis, 
that you would sometimes see in a in a quote to mark in that the author left something out here. Uh, that's kind of weird, and that's why I want to add another layer on top. It's five characters of this again. Mm, yeah. I wish I had a capable editor that would show me how many characters these are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. And then 1, 2, 3, 4 of plain text again. No links, but can't look for no attribute, can we? Rerun this test and then let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Not quite what I expected. 0 to 4 is not equal to 0 to 4. 4 to 8, 4 to 8, 8 to 13, that works. 3 to 27, pair back tick. Mm hmm. Ah, there's plain text, of course. Um, the, the back tick pair is not the end of everything. There's also plain text inside. You see, this is in part, um, in part because of the uh, the the theme that is not highlighting anything. If I would add um, recognition for the backtick pair, um, the backticks themselves to add some syntax highlighting, color them, well, let's say in a light gray, or add background color to the whole thing, and then, you know, add color variations for, for pieces of this, then I would get um, smaller attribute token ranges. But I'm, just, I'm just looking at the the smallest piece of token, the, well, that's not quite right. I'm rather looking for the largest pieces of tokens that I can get at the moment. And so I get, uh, the highlight color isn't barely visible. Rerun the test. I'm just getting uh, this whole piece as text because no style is applied for this, no style is applied for this, no style is applied for this piece. It's just one, well, th this belongs together as a pair of back ticks, and then inside there's just plain text. So that's it. Um, yeah, so that's why there's, um, even though there are back tick uh, tokens, they are not recognized in this case. At least they are not stored in the, um, they are recognized, but they are not stored inside of the attributed string to not fragment it uh, unnecessarily, which is also, um, which which is also maybe not the, the best approach. I just realized while talking about this, you're my rubber duck at the moment, um, that when I'm not, mm, no notifications please, when I'm not oh, half past 11 already, what was I going to say? Oh, let's say if I was if, if the, the the H1 block, even though there's no special style for this, the H1 block itself makes a difference um, because there's text inside, and because the text inside is at least going to be um, styled as plain text. Um, we're getting some more metadata. We're also getting this metadata, even though marker H1 is not. Uh, styled but here i think it's a bit different it's a bit different um but the edge cases I, I can't remember all the edge cases it's, it's a bit um complex at the moment so uh it's it's too complex for me to remember all the cases and make sense of them i think this is the case here let's just let's just try it let's say we have um, have a pair back tick and inside the back tick and we want 
any style for that. I think I can, oh no, it's break time. It is break time indeed. Let's just font style and I just add anything, anything at all to make this compile. Oh, it's complaining, cannot, blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay, this is not the syntax then. This is, uh, let me rerun this again. Sorry for the big black bar telling me to make a break. I'm going to do that in a second. Okay, that didn't actually affect anything at all. So, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't actually know from the top of my head why the backtick uh, isn't, the backtick token is not uh, stored at the moment. Um, anyway, so that's part of the, uh, the TDD process here. Mm. Wait a second, I introduced a compiler thing. Yeah, this is this is like wrapping up stuff before before the break. Uh, always, always nice because the black bar is getting in the way. Um, but like, who was it? Hemingway, Poe, or some such um, fella said, uh, it's a good idea to leave um, your writing desk with an unfinished sentence. So when you get back, you can immediately continue doing something useful instead of uh, having to figure out where you left off because it's so apparent. And this is like the unfinished sentence equivalent just for coding. I haven't committed anything yet. Hey. But, uh, well, there are many um, different variations of this, like leaving a red test so you know um, what you have to do next when you get up in the morning, which is make the test green again, things like that. But anyway, um, that's it for this piece. Uh, make a break and then see you later.